here's the mail, it never fails, it makes me wanna wag my... Well, I don't have a tail, so... When it comes, I want to wail Hi guys, I'm Alexa. I run this channel and I also blog over at Alexa Loves Books. And today I will be talking about everything I acquired in the month of August. August is my birthday month and I usually spend quite a bit of money on books. But this time around I actually didn't spend as much as I thought on books. I actually was really, 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 really lucky and had a lot of publishers be extra generous with me and send me a lot of stuff that I'm super excited for and I can't wait to share it with you guys today. The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. I just wanted to show it to you. So it says, be deceived or be destroyed. There is this cool pin, and there is an arc of the Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. It says in the back, nothing can prepare you for Nemesis. A Diabolic is ruthless. A Diabolic is powerful. A Diabolic has a single task, kill in order to protect the person you've been created for. For Nemesis, that person is Sidonia, heir to the Galactic Senate. But when the Power Mad Emperor summons Sidonia to the Galactic Court as a hostage, there is only one way for Nemesis to protect Sidonia. She must become her. Now one of the galaxy's most dangerous weapons is masquerading amidst politicians and two-faced senator's children, and Nemesis must find within herself the one thing she's been told she doesn't have humanity. I'm not gonna lie, it sounds really epic. It's published by Simon & Schuster, so thank you to the lovely folk over there for sending me this art. The next book that I'm gonna show you is one that I accepted for review and that book is Glitter by April and Pike and it just has this really really cool cover and the reason why I picked it up is not because of the Breaking Bad comp but because of the Marie Antoinette comp because I'm really fascinated by Marie Antoinette. It is actually set in the Palace of Versailles and the main character of this book, Danica, actually witnesses a young king commit murder and her mom blackmails the king into marrying Danny at a very young age. Danny doesn't want this to happen however so she decides that she needs to earn enough money to escape and in order to do so she has to kind of become a drug pusher in that world. This just sounds so fascinating. I cannot wait to read it. Thank you to Random House for sending me this art and I can't wait to check it out. I got a surprise package in the mail recently and it was from um, the novel. It was this pack of three books which is tied by a ribbon which I thought was really cute and yeah I'm very excited because I wasn't expecting to get this package but I did which is awesome and the three books are Seven Days of You, which is by Cecilia Vaness, Cloud Wish, which is by Fiona Wood, and A Tragic Kind of Wonderful by Eric Lindstrom. A Tragic Kind of Wonderful is about a girl named Mel Hannigan, and she suffers from bipolar disorder. She's been keeping her diagnosis a secret for the most part, but she's starting to struggle because this new relationship that she has is kind of bringing it to the light, and then when a former friend confronts her about like how their relationship ended. The whole equilibrium that Mel has been striving for is about to fall apart. And this book is basically how she deals with that. And it sounds great. And I really love the colors on this cover. It's absolutely gorgeous. All I remember about this book is that it's set in Tokyo. Let's read like the comp. It says, Anne and the French Kiss meets before sunrise. Sophia is living in Tokyo and she basically has seven days left there before she has to return to the US. Just as she is about to leave, one of the people she kno she's known from her former life Jamie comes into town. She doesn't want him to kind of like steal her thunder, but when everything kind of implodes around her, he's the one who's there. I'm very excited because first of all, it's set in Tokyo, which I love. Second of all, it has one of the cutest covers I've ever seen. And it says that it is a powerful coming of age story about the difference between who you are and who the world sees, which I'm sold just based on that. Van is a girl who likes to fantasize about things, but she has two categories of fantasies the nourishing kind and the pointless kind. So like nourishing is dreaming about stuff that could actually happen in the future and pointless is dreaming about stuff that will never happen. Ends up making a wish about a boy she likes and they suddenly end up having like, he ends up noticing her and from there her life begins to change. Um, she starts thinking whether it's the magic of first love or whether there is a wish that actually got granted. It sounds super cute and I can't wait to read it. Thank you so much the novel for sending me those books. The Romantics by Leia Conan and has a really cute cover as well. This book is narrated by Love. Love narrating the story of this boy named Gael who's about to fall in love with the wrong girl. Love is trying to stop him from making this mistake. It sounds really cute and really funny. Thank you Abrams for thinking of me and sending me this book. I am really excited because 
because I'm gonna be on my first ever booktube tour. Booktube tours are hosted by Grace over at Loving Them Books. I'll link to her channel down below. She's so funny. I love her videos. The book that I will be doing a review for is My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry by Frederick Backman. My friend Hannah from So Obsessed With absolutely loved this book and she was the one reason that I even heard of this book before, so I definitely want to read it. It's basically about this girl named Elsa. After her grandmother dies, she leaves behind all these letters apologizing to people, and Elsa deems it her mission to go and bring them to the people. I'm very excited. You can watch out for my review. It will be up in the month of September, so get excited, guys. Thank you, Grace, for organizing the tour, and thank you to Simon & Schuster for sending me this book. Okay, so I really got spoiled this month because a huge box came from Riveted Lit, and I was like freaking the hell out when I got that box because I did not expect it. These are all the books that were in that box. Tell Me Something Real by Kala Devlin is one of the books that was in the box and this is the story of three sisters who are dealing with a mother who is dying of cancer. I said some a lot about this in my wrap up but I'll basically tell you that I enjoyed it except for one part of the plot aka the romance. The Telling by Alexandra Sirowi and his cover is like mesmerizing. Lana used to know what was real. That was before when her life was small and quiet. Her golden stepbrother Ben was alive. She could only dream about bonfiring with the populars. Their wooded island home was idyllic, and she could tell the truth from lies, and Ben's childhood stories were firmly in her imagination. Then came after. After has Lana boldly kissing her crush, jumping into the water from too high up, living with nerve and mischief. But after also has horrors, deaths that only make sense in fairy tales, and terrors from a past Lana long thought forgotten. How creepy does that sound? I not really heard of this one, so I am very curious and I will be checking it out. Next book that was in there is The Last True Love Story by Brendan Keeley. The point of living is learning how to love. That's what Grandpa says. To Hendrix and Karina, both 17 and only alike in their loneliness. That sounds like another line that tries to promise kids that life doesn't actually suck. Okay, so love, sure. The thing about Karina, her adoptive parents are suffocating her, trying to mold her into someone acceptable, predictable, like them. Hendrix, he's cool, kind of a poet, but also kind of lost. Grandpa is his only family, but he's fading from fast from Alzheimer's, and Hendrix has made Grandpa an impossible promise that he'll get him back east to the hill where he first kissed his wife, before his illness wipes away all memory of her. So Hendrix and oh, so Hendrix and Karina actually help. I, I'm just saying Grandpa, but it's just his GPA here. Um, they take him from the uh, assisted living facilities in, and they take him back to that place and it just sounds so cute. So it's like a road trip and a love story and like this whole thing with like doing something nice for a grandparent and it just gives me warm fuzzy feelings. So I'm actually really looking forward to reading this one even though I did not know what it was about before I read the back. The Scorpio Rules and The Swan Riders which are both by Aaron Bow and they're in the same series. It's about a girl named Greta. She's basically a duchess and also the crown princess and she's a hostage to peace. So she and some other kids are all like sent somewhere and they're kept as hostages so that their parents who run different like countries to keep the peace between all of them. A new hostage arrives named Elian and he basically decides to like throw the entire system into upheaval and yeah so that sounds pretty interesting. I actually didn't hear too much about this one. I'm very curious and I won't read the back of this one because I don't want to find out what happened in the first one. The very last thing that was in the box is actually the one I was super super excited about because I would heard about it before and it is Every Hidden Thing by Kenneth Opal and this is basically Romeo and Juliet meets Aunt Romeo and Juliet meets Indiana Jones, which duh, sounds amazing. This is about two rival families, the Bolts and the Cartlands, and they both want to be the first to discover the bones of a gigantic wreck. Next, we have a book I know absolutely nothing about, and that book is The Edge of Life by Elizabeth George. Not too fond of this cover, I'm not gonna lie. This is actually the final book in a saga, which I did not know. It just sounds like a romance that's set in a specific island, and it talks about all the different people on that island, what happens to them. I don't know if I'll be reading this, but thank you for sending it to me. Who's this? From Penguin. It's from Viking, actually, so thank you. The Littlest Bigfoot by Jennifer Weiner, and this one I wasn't expecting either. It's actually a middle grade book, and it's basically about a girl named Alice Mayfair. She gets shipped off to boarding school at the age of eight, and she ends up becoming best friends with a girl named Millie when she rescues her from the lake one night. Millie just so happens to be a Bigfoot. Alice promises that she'll protect the secret of Millie's existence and her family's existence, and there's a league of Bigfoot hunters that end up showing up in the story, and the two of them have to figure out a way for Millie and her family to stay safe, and that sounds super cute, actually. Actually, that book came from Simon & Schuster, so thank you for that. I also got this bad book in the mail, and it's like fantastic, and has beautiful foil on it. I haven't read this one yet. I have an arc of it. I haven't read it yet, but I plan to soon. It's a multi-perspective story, and it basically happens all in one senior skip day. I don't really know much more than that, but it's so beautiful, guys. 
so beautiful. I love it so much. I love getting pretty books in the mail, especially when I don't expect them to come. Which are kind of like the best. So thank you, Candlewick Press, for sending me this lovely finished copy. Okay, the people at Random House were super, 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 super kind and sent me this awesome, like, little series that they're doing. And it's kind of like this updated version of all these classics. So there's like YOLO, Juliet, Seriously, Hamlet, A Midsummer Night, hashtag no filter, and Macbeth hashtag, Macbeth hashtag killing it. I think it is so hilarious that they're taking this classic material from Shakespeare and making it somewhat accessible to younger readers in this way with the use of emojis and like updating the story. And yeah, it just sounds so fun. So happy to have these and I can't wait to read them. If you guys follow my blog, which you should, I hosted a giveaway recently for a copy of The Reader by Tracy Chi, and I actually got an ARC, which is somewhere over there, but I also got this awesome tote which says, I am the reader, um, hashtag the reader, and Tracy Chi. It's pretty cool. It's like a sling tote, which is unusual because I expect the usual shoulder totes. This ARC of Sight by Neil Shesterred. It's set in a world where humanity has conquered everything, even death, and the only people who can take life or end it is are the scythes. Citra and Rowan are two people who are apprentices to be them, but they kind of don't want to. <laughs> so I guess it's like the start of a new series about that. They also sent me this really cool shirt with the print on the cover. And I think the illustration is so great. So it was really cool to get this shirt. And I'm excited about that. Again, thank you, Simon and Schuster. You guys are so generous to me in this video. Erica from over at Bloomsbury tweeted about a book that she compared to Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. And if you know me, you know that I recently finished a series, aka like a couple of months ago, and I absolutely loved it. It was so good. Erica was talking about The Secrets of Wish Tide by Kate Saunders, and uh, she was so generous and sent me a copy, and I can't wait to read it. It is also about a lady detective, and she solves a mystery, and that's basically all I really need to know about it. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Bloomsbury, for sending this along to me. Ninth City Burning by J. Patrick Black, and this cover is so damn striking. It's basically about an alien invasion and that's all I really know about it. This one came from Penguin Random House, so thank you very much for sending it along. I also got this awesome package from Harper and it included three books. The first one is Harmony House by Nick Sheff, and this is a really creepy cover, I cannot. Jen and Nen and her dad move into a haunted house. Jen actually gets a sense that there's a lot going on in the house and she starts to discover more about its history. I don't know if I'd read this because I'm a scary cat, like I said, but it does sound pretty interesting. Escape from Asylum, which is a prequel novel. Um, author is Madeline Rue, and I've never read Asylum, so I am not gonna look at what this one is about, but creepy cover. These are like good Halloween books though. And the last one is something I'm actually quite excited about. And it's Grizz Grimley's Tales from the Brothers Grimm. And these are collected by Jacob and Willem Grimm and the paintings are by Gris Grimley and I just, okay, first of all, you guys know I love fairy tales. Second of all, I grew up reading Grimm's fairy tales, so I'm pretty damn excited about this. I literally shrieked when I saw it. Look at that! It has a surprise under the dust jacket. Ugh, ugh. And it has pretty end papers. It has like really like fun illustrations. I'm gonna look for like a big one. It has really fun illustrations in it, which I'm very excited about and I'm gonna add this to my collection. So thank you Harper Collins for the last three books. August is my birthday month and so I got a little present from my friend Kelly and one of the things was a book and the book was a collector's library edition of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare which is my favorite Shakespeare play only because it's the first I ever read and fell in love with and I love that I have this in my collection and I actually have a little princess version of this so it seems fitting to have this one as well. She also sent me the copy of an art copy of Poison Blade by Kate Elliott which is the sequel to Court of Fives. Can't really tell you too much about this one because it's a sequel. I thought the first book was really interesting. Curious to see how it continues. So thank you, Kelly, for sending those to me. Mishma from Chasing Fairy Tales actually sent me an arc of Shiny Broken Pieces, which is the sequel to Tiny Pretty Things. And I basically can't really tell you about this one because it's also a sequel, but Tiny Pretty Things is a bad ballerinas book. So it's about three ballerinas and their lives as they try to progress in their careers. And there are a lot of like secrets and scandals and stuff going on enough like like I, I forgot about this but like I had a gift card to Barnes & Noble so guess what I actually had pre-ordered Tiny Broken Pieces which I kind of forgot about so I have two copies of it Oops. <laughs> but thank you Mishma for sending this to me I really appreciate your generosity and I'm so excited okay so I just wanted to show you guys because I got my pre-order goodies for like pre-ordering Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas and first of all there's this really awesome notebook that says you could rattle the stars and oh, just beautiful, look at that, it's just beautiful focus. And the back has a 
Aelin and Rowan and Aidian and Lysandra and Dorian and Kale and Nedrin and Manon and Alid and Lorcan. Oh, love it, love it, love it. You also get these um, pretty colored pencils uh, and they just say the Throne of Glass series are dropped, so pretty awesome. Here are the books that I actually bought this month. First was a random pick, and that is Vinegar Girl by Ann Tyler, and this is part of the Hogarth Shakespeare series. And this one is basically a retelling of The Taming of the Shrew. It just sounds so good. I just love the idea of Hogarth Shakespeare, and I think I'm gonna wanna read the others as well. But this one, I just couldn't resist, because A, beautiful cover, and B, Taming of the Shrew. What, what, what more could I ask for? The next book is a Kate Morton book, and I really love this edition. It's The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton, and I just, oh, it's so beautiful, it's so simple. And the back basically says, what happens when the secrets of one family tear another apart? And it just sounds really good. I haven't read any Kate Morton yet, but I do want to give her a shot. And I just thought this edition was so pretty and decided to splurge on it. So yeah, can't wait. Lindsay of Bring My Book says this is her favorite. So I am looking forward to reading it. On Impulse by The Life Between Oceans by M.L. Stedman. And the reason I bought this was because A, I keep seeing the trailer everywhere and I really want to see the movie, but I also want to read the book before seeing the movie. And like B, I saw it in the bookstore today. I'm filming this like early in the week and I just, I was just like, I gotta get it. So I did. From what I could gather, it's basically about a husband and wife. They basically live on like a pretty isolated area because the husband becomes a lighthouse keeper and then one day a boat washes ashore and there's a baby in it and the two of them kind of adopt the baby. There's a lot more going on and there might be more to the situation with the child than they thought and that just sounds really fascinating to me and it doesn't seem that long so I might be able to read this soon. This was a book that I could not decide if I should pre-order or just buy and today I just caved and bought it because it's so beautiful and it is Furthermore by Tahara Mafi. I don't really need to know much more than that it's a middle grade adventure because I love those kinds of books and it's just beautiful. I just couldn't resist this cover when I saw it. It's absolutely lovely. I wanted to show you my August uppercase box. I love uppercase because I really like, first of all, I really like the presentation of their thing. And second of all, it's not as expensive. So I like that a lot. So let me just slide everything out all at once and then show it to you guys. Oh, this is so cute. It's like a little um, print that says words brought us together. And this is from Casey West's book, P.S. I Like You, and it's just so cute. I would actually frame this because I feel like words um, brought me and my husband together. So yeah, definitely love this. The next thing in here is like a necklace. Oh, it is a necklace. And it says, oh, it's a necklace that says once upon a time. How cute is that? I would totally wear this. The next thing in here is this little notepad and it's really cute as well. I really, really love the print on it. And of course we have the book, P.S. I Like You by Casey West, which I'm sure you guys have seen in my other video. I'm gonna be giving one copy to one of my best friends. And this one is signed, which is cool. Anyway, if you guys didn't know, this is basically like a YA romantic comedy in the vein of You've Got Mail. There's a girl named Lily and she, while she's boarding class one day, she writes the lyrics of a song on her desk. And it just so happens that when she returns to her desk later on, like I think it's the next day, she sees that someone has written back. And so there's like this back and forth exchange. It's just so cute. And I love the sound of that. So I'll definitely, definitely be reading this soon because I still haven't read it. And um, as usual, there's this bookmark where you can enter the code and find like some special thing. I really like this month's uppercase box. I really think the stuff in it is so cute. And the very, 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 very last thing that must be shown is this Illumicrate subscription box. I really have enjoyed getting all these Illumicrate boxes because I like seeing the UK editions a lot. The inside looks like this and it has the big Illumicrate card. I'm not gonna look at this yet because this has the full list of contents. I just wanna like open all the things. The first thing is a discount Oh, a discount code for my bookmark shop. And it's the really cute bookmarks that have like, the feet that stick out at the end of the book. And then, oh, there's some tea. And it says, it's always tea time. And that's a quote from Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. And there's like this strawberry tea. I am a tea person, especially lately. I've been gravitating towards tea more than coffee. So I'm excited about that. And then there are, I guess these are the signed book plates. There's two of them. Oh, these are so these are just gonna go in my Harry Potter shell. They're like these really cute Harry Potter like coaster things and like Harry, Ron, and Hermione and Harry, Ron, and Hermione from Cursed Child. And I just, oh my God, these are so cute. I love these so, so much. They're so adorable. Just look a lot. Oh my God, so good, so good. There is a print that says, we roared and roared and twisted and dreamed for ours, a veil of better dreams, Pierce Brown. And that's just Beautiful, look at that. The next one says, all deeds that last are print 
or painted in blood. And this one says break the chains, also Pierce Brown. And this one says team howlers, which is really cool. This is pretty cool. I like this set of prints, so yeah. And I still have not read the series, but I do own the first one on Kindle. A set of like temporary tattoos with like different kinds of witches, so. There's Earth Witch, Fire Witch, Water Witch, and Air Witch, which is very Avatar-ish, but I love that a lot. And then, there's a tote bag that says, In Omnia Paradis. Oh, wow! This is cool! This is a letter from Laura Eve, who is the author of The Graces, and yeah, I'm gonna like read the entirety of it later, but like, this is pretty awesome. I like this a lot. Oh, there's also this postcard that says, Unboxed by Nome Pratt. The book is obviously The Graces by Laura Eve, and this is the UK edition, and this is pretty cool. In case you haven't heard of it before, The Graces is about this girl named River who finds herself fascinated with um, a group of witches, I think they're all siblings, who call themselves The Graces, and yeah, that the book kind of explores the relationship between them. It was pitched at, it was comp, with Buffy the Vampire Slayer on the craft, but I've heard kind of mixed things about this, so I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it, but I'm still willing to give it a shot. That's spoil this month. Instead of just getting one book, we got two, and I'm sure, like, based on this alone, you guys know what the other book is. It is this beautiful edition of Never Night by Jay Kristoff. This is basically about a girl who sees her father murdered or knows her father's murdered, and she joins the Red Church, which is a school of assassins, and she just wants to take revenge, and it just sounds so good. Also, there were these like coloring pages and these are like cool. I think they're Six of Crows themed, so this is pretty awesome. All in all, this is like one of the most epic Illumicrate boxes I've ever gotten, which I am very, 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 very pleased with. I'm so excited it finally came. Those are all the things that I acquired in the month of August and this video is probably gonna be horrendously long. I will try to make it shorter, I promise, in the editing. So if you saw any books you were interested in, tell me in the comments. If you've read any of these or want to read any of these, tell me in the comments as well. I would love to hear it. Let me know what you got in the month of August that you're super excited about. If you wanna follow me on the other social media places that I am on, you can see that all down in the um, info box below. And yeah, I will see you guys in another video soon. Bye!